Sam Fuller was blacklisted. Uh, I believe he was blacklisted more than once. And you can read a, you can read his posthumous uh, autobiography by Jerome Rudis and his uh, and Fuller's widow Krista. Um, and I thought that maybe you all would appreciate an interview we did with Vincent Sherman uh, about how he was blacklisted, just so you have a sense of what the blacklist is. And um, you can also see some remarks that I made to introduce Vincent Sherman's uh, uh, interview about the blacklist. Vincent Sherman was a big-time Hollywood director who directed The Adventures of Don Juan with Errol Flynn. Uh, All Through the Night was another movie that he did. I think Bogart was in that one. My favorite Vincent Sherman movie is The Hard Way. I think that was 1942. Anyway, he was blacklisted at the height of his career. And I think that since Sam Fuller, and unfortunately I wasn't able to interview him about, uh, although Sam Fuller did talk about getting blacklisted on White Dog when I was at his house and how basically these, uh, these black guys showed up on the set and, and just assumed that this was a racist movie. And, and when the kind of little rumor got out, um, Fuller was blacklisted and had, you know, then he went to Paris or he had, couldn't work or whatever. Uh, you can read it in his book. And Vincent Sherman had a similar thing because apparently there was just a little excerpt, a little teeny-weeny line in Hollywood about Sherman being a pinko. It was just kind of a little rumor. And bingo, that was the end of his career. So, uh, but Fuller, I think, was blacklisted more than once. At any rate, uh, uh, I thought it would be interesting to uh, see the Vincent Sherman blacklist uh, because I think a lot of young people, especially trauma fans, are, um, are not, uh, they don't remember, uh, they weren't around, and they uh, don't realize that the blacklist did exist and still does exist, and uh, it's a very nefarious uh, method of, uh, of um, keeping uh, economic power in the hands of a few uh, white men. There were actors like John Wayne and Ward Bond and um, Victor McLaughlin, and if I understand correctly, these guys, I don't know what their motivation was, but they'd ride around on motorcycles. They would uh, terrorize gay people and uh, uh, minorities and the people they perceived to be red or pinko or commies. And, and, and apparently you had to go to them. If you were blacklisted, you had to go to them and, and uh, you know, butter them up or kiss their ass or whatever in order to uh, be non-blacklisted. And with some people, like Vincent Sherman, who had absolutely no... Uh, uh, affiliation with any kind of radical, subversive, anti-American group, um, uh, the, so they, w- they would put him sort of on a gray list, which basically made sure he couldn't work, but they, n- they didn't out and out call him a communist or call him whatever they were calling the people on the blacklist. It was kind of a gray list. So it, it, again, it was more mercurial. You can't put your finger on it. And uh, it's very insidious, and that uh, is what Vincent Sherman was a victim of. It was more the gray list than the blacklist. But in either event, it uh, destroyed his career, and uh, it, uh, it's a pity that uh, uh, this guy who was so prolific uh, was uh, cut off at the legs. Another interesting point is that many of our great uh, American Film Institute heroes, like um, Elia Kazan, who won the Lifetime Achievement Award, Elia Kazan won an Oscar for Lifetime Achievement. What did he do? He named names. He got people blacklisted. That bastard didn't even, you know, I could understand if you had to, you know, your house was being taken away, you had to protect your family. Elia Kazan was making bundles of money on Broadway. He was Arthur Miller's director on Broadway. So he didn't need Hollywood work. He could have told the House of Un-American Activities Committee or whomever it was, he could have told them to take a flying leap. But he cooperated with them. He got the Academy Award. And Steven Spielberg clapped. I saw it on TV. The point being that young people today, they say, well, you know, art is more important than politics. Art is more important than politics. So Elia Kazan should get the award. Not true. Not true. There are plenty of people to give the Lifetime Achievement Award. We don't have to give it to a uh, person who named names, who snitched, and who ruined other people's lives and might have caused them to commit suicide. I apologize for being so verbose and for uh, perhaps having the the audacity to try to be didactic, but uh, I've been making movies for uh, 35 some odd years, and I feel that you know I've got something to say to young people, and uh, and I've been inspired by uh, bravery in the movie industry, uh, bravery of people like Vincent Sherman, who is remarkably uh, not bitter. He's 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 rather sanguine. He's he's I'm bitter. I'm bitter, and I I didn't have my career cut cut off at the legs. But I'm still very bitter. But uh, Vincent Sherman, you'll see, is very generous. And Sam Fuller was such a sweet guy, too. In any event, I thought that um, it's I- important uh, that uh, 
we, we, we talked to Vincent Sherman a bit about the blacklisting. He's 98 years old, and um, he's got a hearing problem. So you'll notice in the, in the interview that, that there's certain jump cuts, and part of that is that Eric and I were prompting him a bit on repeating the questions. Now, let's watch. When I was going to do Lone Star, that the producer said to me, Vince, your name is on a bunch of different left-wing causes. I said, well, I'd love to see it. So he showed me a whole list of things. Every liberal organization that I had ever belonged to was on that list. And that's why they thought I may not be red, but I was certainly not white, you see. But a, a number of those items were not true. They some of them, yeah, some of them were not true. Uh, and I went over the list and I said, this is true, that's true, this is not true. They were out to get not only members of the party, they were out to get all liberals, by the way. Who were they and what was the result? Well, that was the... To you I, personally. I think it was called... What's the name of the, the organization? The Motion Picture Alliance. The yeah, Motion Picture Alliance for, for the, the preservation, preservation of American Ideals. Yeah. Mm. That was the, the actual name of it. They were looking for big names to say, these are the big names that belong to the Communist Party or support the Communist Party. More big names, the more publicity the, 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 the organization got. But at the same time, they hurt a lot of innocent people. Did the Directors Guild protect you? Did they back you up, the wonderful no, Directors no, the Guild? No, the Directors Guild did, kept, sort of kept out of it. Tell us about your meeting with Ward Bond. Oh. Well, when I found out that, that uh, I was, my name was on a blacklist, or a gray list, as it were, they said to me I could get it cleared if I'd go up and talk to Ward Bond. Well, Ward Bond, I'm trying to remember some of the other members. John Wayne. Wayne John, John Wayne. Wayne and Ward Bond, Adolf Marju, they were all very active members opposing the, the so-called Red Invasion, you know. Um, and I was told to go up and see Ward Bond. It was Harry Cohn at Columbia who called up Ben Cahane and said, tell Ben, said, tell Ward Bond, Vincent Sherman is a good Democrat, for Christ's sake, talk to him. He, he, he doesn't belong on any list. So um, they said, all right, go up and talk to Ward Bond. Well, I didn't like him. He kept me waiting for over an hour, and then we talked. And he said, well, he said, all we know is that uh, they say that you're a big shot at, at the, uh, at the, in the Communist Party. I said, a big shot? I had nothing to do with the Communist Party. I knew some of the guys that I thought were members of the party, but I was not actively engaged in, uh, in, in, in communist activities. Well, what gave him the right to question you? What gave him the right? Nobody said no. I had left Warner Brothers after being there for 15 years, and I didn't know it at the time. But they let me go, as it were, because they said that uh, I had taken too long on the last picture that I did with Joan Crawford. The word came to me that Warner said he couldn't tolerate me anymore. I found out subsequently it's because I had been tagged as being pro-communist, and that was the reason Warner wanted to get rid of me. And when, uh, when the, that whole thing was over, they asked me to come back to the studio. That was much later on. The reporter had a little blurb. Well, what's this about Vince Sherman yeah. being a red? Well, there was one picture that was, I wanted to do at Universal. And uh, they wanted to sign me for it. In fact, they, they assigned me to it. It was a script that I liked very much. Two or three days after I was announced to direct the picture, the Hollywood Reporter in the gossip column said, the guy, Vincent Sherman, who just signed to direct so-and-so and so-and-so, um, was one of the most outspoken members of the, I forget what it was called, the League or something like that. Anyway, and it, that nailed me, uh, although I was not a member of the party. To the Hollywood Reporter, right? Yeah. Hollywood Reporter, great. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was Good journalism. Right after the Lone Star. Yeah. There was a period of about five years where you didn't work. That's right. But did you try to get work? I tried to get work. And in fact, one of the guys, it seems that uh, Raymond 
Massey was going to do a picture about John Brown at Allied Artists. And he asked for me as his director. Now, I, I knew Massey, but I never worked with him. But he knew that I had done a play in New York about John Brown. And so he wanted me to do the picture. And they turned me down at Allied Artists. But when I went to Allied Artists to talk about it, the guy who was running Allied Artists said to me, Vincent, I'm going to tell you the truth. I can't hire you. He said, but if you tell the committee this or you tell anybody this, I'll deny that I ever told you this. So what could I do? He was honest with me. But um, anyway, I thought I would never work again. How long did you not? not oh, work? it was about four or five years that I was out of, out of work, you know. And uh, fortunately, I was able to get work in Europe. You remember Abe Polanski? Yeah, I, yeah. I met Abe once, yeah. yeah. He had been blacklisted. And he very much protested the award to Kazan. He said, you've already given Kazan some directing Oscars. Why do you need to glorify his life? What's your opinion about that? Well, I'll tell you. The, the, the attitude to a lot of us changed as time went on. When the first guys began to confess so and so, I thought it was terrible that they joined the party and then confessed and so forth and so on. But I also thought it was terrible that the government made them confess. And what the hell? We're supposed to be able to vote the way you want in this country. It's a free country, right? But they came up with excuses and reasons for it and so forth and so on. And the, the mood of the country was, was different. You've got to remember that. Uh, it's very difficult to know where to put the finger and say he is responsible and she is not responsible. The big anti-communist thing sort of slowed up a bit. Um, and now, since the fall of the Berlin Wall and so forth, Communism is not considered a great danger anymore, you see. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the way the public goes, and that's the way the publicity has gone. Before the gray list, you were making a certain amount of money. When you went back to work five years later, were you still making uh, big money? No, no. That was the other thing that happened. When I was knocked off, I was, I was getting a, a very good salary. In fact, I was making 3000 a week and going up to 4000 a week. When I went back to work after years, Warner Brothers offered me $1,000 a week, and I refused it. But they were using it. You know, they said, well, you haven't made a picture in several years, Vincent. That's when I went back, and the first picture I did was the young Philadelphians. And I said, wait a minute. I said, I was making this much when I left here before. Ben, ben Trilling, who was running the studio for Warner, and I said, well, Vincent, it's been several years since you made a picture. I said, all right, but uh, I'll, I'll make a different agreement with you, that if I make a picture, you'll do something about uh, compensating me. So we worked out a deal. My good friend Lloyd owns 1,000 movies. Yeah. He has made money on a lot of them. He has written two books, both bestsellers. He can't get a screen because all the majors are blocking. Yeah, yeah. So, in a sense, it, though it's not politically based, still there's an economic bias against the independent. Well, uh, that's the way that's the way th th this town works, and that's the way the country works. It's the big money that controls things. There's no question about that. If you think it's not going on now, you're you're wrong.